Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here, and I want to talk a little bit more about the long run in Baccarat. What we're going to do is we're going to play a thousand shoes. And to keep things simple, we're just going to make uh, player bets only, and we are going to wager $100 a hand. Now, I know a lot of people would say that the real trick is reading the patterns and betting player or banker or leaving the table or entering it whenever you see certain patterns, but the truth is none of that matters. Um, the cards don't have any memory, and all we really want to know is what does that journey look like? Um, all journeys are pretty much going to be a, a, what's called a random walk. They're going to have a certain potential to go up, to go down, or or stay level, and if we repeat that over and over again, we'll get a graph that represents our wins and losses for all those shoes. So what I've done is to prepare a Monte Carlo simulation that will allow us to play these thousand shoes over and over again and see all sorts of different experiences. So this is what the simulation looks like, and just to uh, give you a overview of what you're looking at here, this jagged line right here, those are your actual results from having played the thousand shoes. So you can see that um, because we're playing $100 a hand, that we expect over time to lose. And that'll be a linear expectation because our losses are proportional to the house edge and proportional to our wagers, but uh, it's, just a, it's just a line that represents where we would expect at the uh, outset our wins or losses to be after any number of hands or shoes. Now, the blue line above and below, that represents the first standard deviation of our play. So what we expect for first standard deviation is that 34.1% of the time we should be above and 34.1% of the time we should be below. In other words, if we look at the area between the red line and the blue line, 34.1% of the time we should be there and 34.1% down here. The yellow line represents the second standard deviation and that'll be 13.6% of the time. And so that'll be a much more rare event, about one in eight, that we should be in either one of these two regions between the blue and the yellow lines. Between the yellow line and the green line, that's the remainder um, between the second and the third standard deviation. And so that will be this region right out here. And really that's almost everything except for just a little piece, about 0.3%. So most of the time we expect to have our results completely fall between these two green lines. If they're outside of the green line, this third standard deviation, that's a very, very rare result. Now, what we see here is one particular run of a thousand shoes. And I just want to show you that this little model can run another thousand shoes and another thousand shoes. And each one of these represents a person who is playing a thousand shoes and what their experience is. And we see their experience relative to standard deviation here. So let's see if we can find somebody who happens to go, oh, this person went on a very big losing streak, didn't they? Look at that. They're below the second standard deviation and losses. That is a very sorry player. Um, here's a, a player who is above the first standard deviation, clear out to the 500 shoe that he plays. Eventually, you see he gets back to the mean over here. And let's go again. We um, have a person here who seems to be doing extraordinarily well after a uh, thousand shoes. He's almost into the second standard deviation. Again, we would expect that roughly 2% of the players will be like this particular person. Um, at this point right here after nearly a thousand shoes. Now, let me tell you what people get right and wrong about this concept called reversion to the mean. So I was giving a, a seminar on this topic at a major international casino, and I pulled up a graph like this, and what we saw was a person, let's just say right here, um, above above the mean, so this person had done very well for themselves compared to the expectation. And someone from their marketing department said, well, what we expect is that this line should eventually go back to the red line. In other words, their concept was that reversion to the mean meant that no matter what your results were, you should always expect this particular line, the, the line of play of the player, 
to try and tend back towards this mean, this center line. Um, and if we look at some of these graphs, then in some cases that might be the case. In other cases, it's not. Notice, for example, look at this person has, um, after all, about 250 shoes, they're still even with the house there. So look, and then they go down to the red line. And, and a lot of people think that what the long run means, what the um, reversion to the mean means is that this should always, the, no matter what your results, you should always send, get pulled towards the red line. And that's what's wrong. There is absolutely no reason for the cards to remember who you are and what your past results are or to have some expectation about what your future results should be. Cards don't remember you. They don't keep a historical record of you. They don't think, oh, you've won or lost in the past and therefore you have to lose or win in the future to get back to this line. So what I've done is just um, created an arrow here that's parallel with your expectation, your theoretical. So you see this red arrow here that I've created. This I can move around. And the point is that no matter where your results are, and let's just go, for example, to this point right here, you always expect in the future, your forward-looking expectation is always that your results will follow that line. That is the most likely outcome, that your results will be average. But what we see is that if your results going forward are average, that even though you started close to two standard deviations, that simply being average eventually pulls you within one standard deviation. And it doesn't matter where you put this line. If we were to start here with somebody three standard deviations above um, average, we see that eventually they'll move to within two standard deviations. And if we kept on extending this line within one standard deviation. So regression to the mean, it simply says that going forward, we always assume that your results will simply be what the theory predicts. They will be average. They will be normal. And if we just assume an average result, then that automatically makes us go from three standard deviations to two to one. Our standard deviation um, gets smaller and smaller, even though our results are simply just normal. Uh, think of it this way. Suppose you were unlucky enough to flip a coin and get 100 heads in a row. But after that, you got 50-50 heads and tails, just like a normal coin would give. Then eventually, those that initial run of, of weirdness is going to be eclipsed. If you do a billion tosses of the coin and one of them happens to be, uh, uh, their outcomes is 100 more than the other, that suddenly doesn't look like very much. So what was very significant in the short run becomes insignificant in the long run. And that's the point we're trying to make here. So let's just go ahead and try this a couple more times and we'll see what happens with some of these players. So here is a player, the results stay very close to expectation. Um, so most part, this is what we expect, right? Here's a person who does very, very poorly. Look, they're way two standard deviations below average down here or expectation. But we see even this person, if they simply have normal results going forward, then their results will get within two standard deviations after a few more shoes. So no matter where you are, this arrow will always take you towards the um, part of the, the graph that has a, a lower standard deviation. And that truly is what regression to the mean means. It doesn't mean that this graph is going to try and force you back to that center red line. It simply means that no matter what your past results were, those are irrelevant going forward. Your future results will simply be average. That's what we expect. And if we use the fact that your future results are average, that means that you, the number of standard deviations from the mean we expect your results to be in the future will be smaller than it is today. All right, that's the topic of the day. I'm going to make this spreadsheet available for you to play with on my website, advancedadvantageplay.com. I hope to see you there. Thanks, everyone.